Greetings, brothers and sisters. Hello and welcome back to Eva's House of Spirit. I'm Eva, and today I'm going to get back into discussing something a little more like practical, useful in spell working. Um, I thought I would present to you the idea of using battery operated candles for spell work. In this video, I'm going to discuss ways in which we can use something like, you know, these little battery operated sort of faux candles in place of actual burning candles for spell work. And you may be wondering, well, why would anyone want to use a battery operated candle? Well, in all honesty, you have to consider there are many different situations that might prohibit someone from using an actual candle, you know, or an open flame of any sort in their home. Um, for example, if someone were to have a relative on oxygen, you can't really have open flame in a situation like that. Um, if someone is a young magical practitioner, they live in their parents' home, and for whatever reason, if their parents are not keen on the burning candles, I wouldn't necessarily advise going against them. I mean, it's their home. You have to sort of respect their home if you're living in it. Um, or even, you know, some people just have very curious young children or pets, or some people take care of aging relatives that might have dementia, and in such situations, having an open burning flame in the house might be a bit of a safety issue. So. These are just some examples of why someone might not be able to burn an actual candle. Does that mean that they're screwed in terms of wanting to do candle work? I don't think so. That's where this video comes in. Now before I get into suggestions as to how you might, you know, maybe dress a candle like this, or work with a candle like this, I wanted to take a moment and just remind you all that essentially in any kind of magical working symbolism is extremely powerful and your intention is the cornerstone of like anything you do. That being the case, consider your faux candle kind of like the concept of utilizing a vision board in manifesting something. You don't, you don't really need an actual burning candle. Just like, you know, a lot of us have come to realize you don't really need any tools, honestly. They just help. They make things a little easier, they help us to focus and really like direct our intentions a little better. So, though it's nice if we can have an actual burning candle in our homes or, you know, if we can work regular traditional burning candles, that's great. But if you can't, think of your faux candle as symbolic of an actual candle. Symbols are very, very, very powerful. You know, you don't, you don't really need the actual thing. And the reason why I'm saying this is because um, if you think about so many other things in magic, you know, uh, people that do doll magic, for example, you don't need to have the actual person in front of you. You're using the doll as a symbol of that person. Um, people that you know, may use charms to call in prosperity into their life. These are usually symbols that allude to prosperous um, associations or prosperous qualities. You don't really need um, to have, like, for example, a bur the burning sun from the sky, like, in your living room. I know that the sun symbolizes prosperity and all that, and you know, but there's a lot of, you know what I'm saying, we use a lot of things, even with planetary associations, you don't need the actual planet in your pocket, you know what I'm saying? So, 
symbols are just as powerful. That's what I'm trying to say, and I hope my explanation on that wasn't too silly. So, that said, how might we work with a candle like this? How might we dress it? One thing that you may notice with candles like this is they usually have sort of like recessed tops. And that's really cool because you can put things inside of the little recess. Um, if you wanted to, let's say, put a little drop or two of oil on your finger and maybe go around or on the inside of that little recessed area, you could do that. I don't recommend pouring oil into there though because if that oil, which it probably will, if that oil should drip down into the electronic works inside the candle, it'll probably ruin it. Um, and I don't know if that's very safe, you know? Um, so yeah, don't pour oil in there, but you could, you could probably put like a drop on your finger and, you know, rub that in there, you know, clockwise to draw in, counterclockwise to send away, maybe. <laughs> um, you could sprinkle herbs in the little recess. You could sprinkle glitters in the little recess. Whatever you want to put in there that you feel resonates with you and really symbolizes the sort of work that you want to do. Now I know some people feel that when you um, put oils on a candle or when you put herbs into a candle, a real candle. They're like, well, it's getting burned up, it's getting all blended in there, the spirit of the fire, you know, it kind of like Yes, okay, I get that. But with a faux candle, you don't have to burn up the herbs. The herbs being there in your, in your focal point of your work, you know, they will still lend their energy into what you're doing. You just won't have to constantly, you know, be redressing and burning actual candles all the time. Which brings me to the point that these are really, really good for long-term works. Long-term working with actual candles has the one drawback that you're going to spend a lot of money on candles because you have to constantly like burn one, burn one, burn one, burn one. If you're working with something like this, you can use the same one indefinitely because it does not deplete itself. Except maybe you change the batteries, you know what I'm saying? But aside from that, it's pretty indefinite. Um, so yes, you can put herbs in there, glitters in there, a drop of oil you can rub into the little recess on the top. You can charge and program crystals, place them into the little recess in the top, you know, and just let them sit there and lend their energies to the work with the herbs and whatever. Um, get creative, you know, you want to put a charm in there, little metal charms or whatever, if you have a candle with a very deep recess like this one, you can put several things into there. Um, yeah. And, you know, you can also get creative with the outside of the candles. Some, some um, battery operated candles are plastic and some are actual wax. If you have a plastic battery operated candle, you could take a Sharpie marker and it's very nice that they make colored Sharpies, so you can select a color that kind of goes with the work you're doing. You can take a Sharpie marker and you can draw like a sigil, a symbol, you can write a prayer on the outside, you can write an affirmation on the outside, um, you can, whatever, the sky's the limit. You know, you want to, if you work with psalms, you want to write a psalm going around your candle, if it's plastic with a Sharpie, go for it, you know? Whatever you feel really would lend power to this. It is, like I said, it's like a vision board. You are concentrating your, you know, intention on something that is a visual focus for what you are manifesting. This, the whole aim of this is to like click your mind into that space that you are calling out to the universe, creating this thing you know, through your sheer will alone, whatever it is that you want to bring in, or even, honestly, even if you wanted to send something away, you know, you're affecting changes, but you're using your will. The, the faux candle is honestly your symbolic focal point. You know, you don't really need 
an open burning flame, though that's nice to have. So like I was saying, you can use a Sharpie. You can totally embellish the outside on a plastic uh, battery-operated candle. This is an example of one that I did for something that I'm doing. I'm not really going to talk about that because that really doesn't have to do with what we're talking about today, and that's personal. But you can see that with the Sharpie, I, uh, I embellished it. And when I turn it on, let me turn out the light. You can see that when the lights are out, the intention that you draw on with a Sharpie, it kind of it kind of shows through in a really cool way. I mean, there's there's lighting coming from the computer, but it is pretty neat that it's still it's still visible. You know what I mean in the darkness as you burn this, as you burn this. So that's one thing you could do. You could embellish the plastic variety of battery-operated candles with Sharpies. Again, like I said, it doesn't have to be a sigil or an intention like this. You can use prayers, psalms, affirmations, symbols, anything that you feel resonates with you that helps you to build the power of your focused intention. Okay, so the lights are back on. Now, what else could you do with uh, these candles? I talked about the plastic ones that you can, you know, embellish them with Sharpie. Well, with the plastic ones as well, you can, um, you can even decoupage, you know, going around the candle, how we were talking about, um, this being sort of like a vision board, but in a more candle-like form, like because it's such a symbol and a focus and it's yours. You can cut out pictures and words from magazines just like you would for making a vision board. And with the plastic ones, like this, um, you can even just make a little collage going around your candle. If, you know, just to be like your visualization toward whatever your working happens to be. That's something you could do. Um, with the wax varieties of the battery operated candles, you could carve the actual wax with like a carving tool or a knife or something. You can carve again, sigils, symbols, affirmations, prayers, whatever you want to put on there. You could, with your printer, you could create um, labels for your candles regardless what they are made of. If you don't want to necessarily decoupage them, you can just like make a nice label to go around it. And I, th I think in the darkness that label would be nicely illuminated, which would be really pretty. Um, but on your label, again, you can use whatever symbolism you want to use in terms of the photos, the pictures, the wording, the prayers, whatever you want to put on there. This is your crafty focus. Go nuts with it. You can embellish these with like hot glue and all manner of charms or other crafty adornments. You can paint on these with enamel. Um, you can do whatever you feel drawn to do. You know? And every time that you turn your candle on, every time that it's on, you will sort of click yourself into that mental space that this is your time to be focused on your intention. You know, if it's five spare minutes a day, if it's... Uh, 20 spare minutes a day, whatever time you want to set aside to just really focus on your intention every day, these battery operated candles can help you to do that. You know, while you see it illuminated, it's like it, it sort of on some subconscious level as well as conscious level, your mind sort of like gets into that magical space. You know, you're clicked into that magical headspace and emotional place. And then when you're ready to go back to the mundane, you just turn it off. Some of them, they have like, let's say, like this one is vanilla scented wax. 
you know, when it's burning for a while, you start to smell the vanilla. There's other ones that have different scents. I've seen them out there. If that's something you like, you can look for a battery operated, you know, faux candle that has like a scent to it, if that's something you like. You know, that's some kind of scent that um, sort of complements what you're intending to do. These are probably really good for your general working candles. Like if you just want to have like a candle on your altar to just kind of signal yourself when you are um, clicking into your working sort of mind frame, you can use a candle like this for a working candle. You know, um, that doesn't mean you can't use real candles as well, but at least it would probably save you a lot of money on working candles because we do so much work. <laughs> You know, working candles, you tend to really heavily use those. Again, as I've said, these are really well suited for indefinite or long-term works. Um, if you were to, let's say, not want to work something anymore, you could, I guess, redecorate it. Um, you know, take out your crystal, toss out your herbs, maybe clean out the oil cleanse it through some incense smoke or something like that. Just redecorate it from scratch and use it again as a different focal point. Um, if it's carved, maybe you could like, um, maybe, I'm just throwing out potentials, maybe you could scratch off the carvings. Uh, I wouldn't say, oh, just bury it in the earth when you're done because there's the battery components inside. So yeah, you can't really just like into the earth. That's not really very cool. But you could cleanse the candle if you're gonna do a different work and you could redecorate it, you know, repurpose it toward another aim. I hope I have at least given you some ideas some ideas that you can take and run with. There are so many ways you can take this simple idea, you know, and, and make it yours. So many ways you can sort of design these candles, whether, like I said, if it's through carving, labels, sharpies, decoupage, um, embellishment with a glue gun and all kind of fancy things, you know, ribbons and whatnot, and make it yours. It is your candle, your focus. You make it yours. Um, you can still do petition paper sitting underneath the candle too. That's something you can do as well. There are so, 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 so many things you can do with a candle like this. Just some, uh, just some food for thought. Please let me know if you found this helpful, if you have anything to add. Questions, comments, thoughts, feelings, etc. I wish you all a wonderful night. Blessed be and ashe. And until our next exchange, brothers and sisters. Bye-bye for now.